Hey there friends out in YouTube land, Asenva here for another official Junkie Spot review! Yes, today I have a very special doll to review and I'm very excited uh, because I was very interested in this doll as I am sure a lot of you were because um, there are quite a lot of threads and discussion about this particular doll. And today I'm here to show you all the brand new 60 centimeter Kujo Amy or Ami or Amie. I'm not sure how they're pronouncing it, but it's A M I E. This is the um, Anthro SD size doll that is customized to look like a dog. And, um,. So if you are kind of one of those peeps that are into the anthro dolls and you're looking for a very affordable and cool looking SD size doll, um, this is a good place to look and a good place to start. And uh, I'm very excited to show you guys the mechanics in the body and I'm very excited to show you kind of some of the things that she can do as well as the things that she comes with. So without further ado, let's go ahead and start the review. So let me go ahead and start you off with some basic measurements. Um, we have a bust size at 26.5 centimeters. Our waist is at 17 centimeters. Our hips are at 28 centimeters. She is approximately 60 centimeters tall. Um, her feet are gonna come in at 7.5 centimeters. Her head is considered like a 7.8 inch like circumference. So I actually, the wig that I had on her was this um, blonde one, but it's actually like an eight, nine, and it was a bit too big. Then I slipped on one of my MSD sized wigs. This one's about like a seven, eight, and this one fits a lot better, a lot more snug. Um, so if you're looking for a wig, you might have to shop more in the MSD sized ranged wigs, like a seven, eight, um, more than an eight, nine for her. The Amy also does come with one dog tail, and two little floppy dog ears. They also come with the magnets as well. These are the uh, Hujo eyes that I was sent, and they're actually really pretty glass eyes. Kind of have like a sparkle to them, and uh, got some glitter in there too. It looks really cool. Um, the website states that she uses a 14 millimeter eye, so I'm gonna assume that these are 14 millimeter eyes. Her body actually has quite a lot of joints in it. Um, which will highly contribute to the movement and poses that she can produce for you. We're going to go ahead and take a look at all these different joints that she has. And you'll also find that a lot of rubber was incorporated into the joints, very similar to that of like a silicone disc. That way she has traction between those joint areas. Um, the points where, you'll, where you will find rubber are going to be here at the neck. You'll find some here at the shoulder. You'll also find some up here in the torso. There's also some here at her elbow. You have some here at her hips. There's some here down at her swiveling thigh, down at her knees, and also at her feet as well. So pretty much throughout her whole body, you'll find um, these pieces of, of rubber that are incorporated with the socket and within the joint there that help with the mobility and you'll see that she'll be able to hold her poses a lot better due to that rubber that is there. Without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and start showing you some of the different parts that she has. We'll start at the head and we'll work our way down um, to the feet. Once again, um, she is made out of ABS, so it's not really resin that she's made out of. It's more of a plasticky material. Um, it doesn't feel like, oh my god, totally different. like. It doesn't feel like poor in quality. It it just feels like a really solid plastic. It's not even that hollow, to, uh, to be honest with you, either. I know some of the other Hujo dolls feel a little bit on the thin side as far as their casting goes for their ABS, but she's pretty, she's pretty thick throughout her body. So let's go ahead and take a look at her head. The head cap comes off a lot easier than most of the Hujo dolls, which is really nice. Um, it's put together uh, with the pegs that are placed here and then this third peg that is here. So those three holes right here are going to go match up with these pegs that are here on this side of the head cap. 
Um, you'll also notice on the back of our head cap here, it says BJD Shop. Honestly, it, um, from what I understand from what Emery told me, it's the same company, Hujo, um, actually has this name as well. I, I guess like, they're the same. Or, I'm not 100% sure like the whole like law-abiding facts behind it, but I know it's just it's the same company. So even though it does say BJD Shop on this one, it's still sold on the Hujo website and it's still manufactured by Hujo. Um, inside of our head you'll see that the sockets for the eyes go in there pretty deeply so um, you're gonna have uh, a really good eye socket for a stemmed eye that way if you do have a stemmed eye you're able to move it and position it a lot better from where they put the sockets in our head here um, as well as a different hook system which I am really excited about it's still not an S hook quite yet, but I do appreciate the fact that they're trying different things. Um, they have kind of like this this uh, donut piece here, which you can find for most resin dolls too. Um, it's like a locking mechanism, and then it has like this uh, keychain snap to it. Uh, so essentially, if you wanted to take off the stringing for this, uh, you're gonna first initially you'll pull up on this string and then if you can see it there the pink part has a gap to it so right now it's locked into position because there's grooves here on either side where the hook I don't know what to call this really where the hook is uh, once you pull up the string and then you twist it it'll go through the pink opening that is there and then it'll also slide through the uh, neck piece this beige part down here this neck piece down here so that way you can remove the head I, I honestly don't understand why they don't just put an S hook in there. <laughs> like, I don't, I don't know why. Or I guess they're just trying to be different. But I honestly would rather have an S hook. Maybe it's because they don't have enough space with the um, pegs that are in here, and that's why they can't do it. I'm, I'm not 100% sure. But this is still loads upon loads better than having that double ring that was there before. So <laughs> I will take this. It's, it's a different kind of thing for us to have to do if you want to take off the head, but it's, I know it's going to be a lot easier than taking off the other heads that we've seen in the past, so that's uh, the basic mechanics for our head here. So this is kind of like a side profile of her face. Looking at it at the front, you'll see that it's got detailing here, so really nice shapely eyes. I actually like the shape of the eyes for this a lot. There isn't really any creasage or anything um, of an eyebrow shape here, so you're gonna probably have to create some lines or something in order to make that effect. Once again, uh, this is where I was talking to you guys about earlier with the rubber. So this is the rubber piece, but due to that rubber piece, she is able to do a crazy amount of posing for her head, and she's able to keep it in that position, which is really nice. So I really like the fact that she can really look, really look up and really look down, which is really cool. So gotta gotta give him kudos points for that, guys. It's really good. So um, moving down, now we're at our arms. Once again, you'll see that the rubber piece is here, and if we were to open up the arm, you'll see that it, it very much, like I was mentioning earlier, kind of is very reminiscent of those silicone pieces that Volx has, um, the little silicone discs that you insert, except this one's made out of rubber. It's there for a purpose, it's going to be there to help you maintain poses, and she's able to hold them quite nicely because of that rubber piece. Kind of got like a plug into the arm hole <laughs> for that socket area, and that's how this piece is, is put in. It's just, if you can imagine, it looks like a funnel into the arm and um, that's how that rubber joint is in there. Once again, Hojo has a interesting arm. Um, at a close position it is uh, really nice, it's, it's kind of smooth looking. Once you start bending it, it's got a couple of different things that you can do. You can bend it all the way and then you kind of get like this flat piece that some people like, some people don't like. Um, and that enables her to bend the arm like this. Essentially, she'd be able to touch her face up here with it. You could also just 
bend just this part here so this part is just staying here and now you've got like a 90 degree angle thing going on uh, once again you're gonna find rubber these two pieces right here uh, are rubber pieces and she's very tightly strung so I really can't separate it as well but um, it's once again kind of like a like a peg uh, rubber joint that's in there that's plugging them together in this one here. Uh, moving on to the hands, uh, like I mentioned in my Facebook video, I did an initial thoughts and I mentioned the fact that this like basically stabbed me. They're really sharp, I'm not gonna lie, these are really, really, really sharp nails. Um, you can see they're leaving indents on my fingers just by me pressing on it here. I would highly suggest probably shaping them or kind of toning them down a bit. The claw hands themselves are just gorgeous. I really like them. If you're looking for kind of like an anthro doll that has animalistic parts, I mean these are really cool looking claw hands. Now I did ask the question because I do get curious all the time about these here and I'll never lie to you guys or I'm not gonna hide something from you but I asked about these and honestly I, I think it's because they're made out of ABS and the way that they're molded uh, has something to do with the mold um, I don't know if you've put kind of like Gundam models together how they have like the pegs and you're supposed to sand off the pegs I think that's I honestly don't know I'll be honest with you guys I don't know if that's how they mold them and like they have the pegs sticking out and they have to sand them down and that's the closest they can sand them down to but I do I do see those on the bodies and um, I see that in different spots I noticed that it's there on the hand um, on their other dolls I've seen them on their backs and things like that but right now that's pretty much the only spot that you'll see them those little circle things so if you're a big stickler for like you know it being completely smoothed out um, that might just be an area that you need to kind of pay attention to I think it's just kind of boils down to the way that they're they're cast so say la vie in all honesty with these little quote unquote imperfections on the hands I would say that you know what whatever man this is still a really good price for this range and type of doll so I mean I don't think it's that big of a deal really so and, I mean I don't think it's really that noticeable unless I really like until I notice like just noticeably pointed it out to you it's not something that's like oh my god what is that you know moving to a really interesting part which is the torso excuse the doll nudity this is where I am just flat out amazed by Hujo because they really do try to do different things and um, so they put rubber here in the torso and it's a really, really thick torso. So you'll see that it's got um, a very interesting part, that metal there. What is that metal there? Well, they strung this doll a little bit differently than most SD dolls are strung, or, or just in general how most dolls are strung. Uh, the way they did this is they did uh, stringing for the head up here and they pushed it down here to about here to this mid joint here and they looped it off and so imagine just kind of like one loop of elastic like here and then for the legs they did the normal stuff that you would do for legs um, with the strings going down with the loops down here and then they joined it with the other one here with a metal clasp so reasons for that I think they were really trying to reduce the way that how sometimes since normally it's typically just one long string that's all the way up to the top from the bottom to the top and sometimes you get that factor of them like sitting up kind of weird or bowing kind of weird to maybe reduce on that maybe it, it may or may not reduce on that since it's got a different point to where it's joined uh, that's my best guess and has it helped I don't know. I haven't played with her enough to really decide if that really was a interesting or good beneficial thing for them to do. So you'll see down here, this is the bottom of it. And it's joined by kind of like one of these clasp things. Yeah, I don't, I don't know guys. I don't know if that really is going to help a lot or if that will reduce anything. I do know for sure now this is going to change how you're going to have to restring her. Uh, you'll have to do it in parts. So 
so you'll essentially have to keep record of how big of an elastic you'll need for this upper part and how big of an elastic you'll need for the lower part. Going back up to the torso part up here, because of that rubber that is there, um, it does help her maintain uh, any poses that you want to do if she's going to be doing like a side pose. It will look kind of weird if she doesn't have any clothes on because you can see, you can like blatantly see that, you know, it's off the torso. Um, but I, I still think it's it's pretty cool because if she has clothes on, you're not really going to get, you're not going to really notice that it's not really matching like on the rest of her body. So like for example like this, like if you're moving it to the side, if she's got clothes on, it's going to cover it. So, but yeah, they, they offered a lot of mobility. Um, for, for bending forward and for going back as well. So, lots of mobility there if you're a person that likes um, mobility in that joint area. Going back to this lower torso part, so you'll notice that right here there is a slot. And the reason why there's a slot there is that you can insert the magnet for the tail there. Moving down to, I think, the most interesting part, which is the hips. So, I have battled with this uh, a couple of times now um, to get her to sit. She stands really well, um, and the main reason behind, reason behind that is that they have a lot of rubber here. This whole piece right here, this, this section right here, is rubber, and that's what's enabling her to keep her standing position. So you should have no fears with standing hair. Standing hair is going to be pretty pretty easy, I think. The only qualm that I have that I still don't really fully understand and I've tried to look at the company photos is how to properly sit her. Because when I sit her, like the rubber, it's so good that it's not letting me sit her comfortably all the way. So I almost have to basically kind of pull it out a little bit here and slide it up kind of get that joint moving and then once I have it open like that and maybe with time she'll be able to sit a lot faster than what I'm having to do with her maybe it's because she's really tight um, it could be a different load of different factors but I noticed that that was a little bit of a struggle for me when I first opened her up so essentially like I said what I had to do was I, I have to pull it out because what it wants to do is it wants to have this lip on top and she won't sit all the way if that lip is on top of the hip here. It won't sit comfortably. It actually has to be underneath. So I really have to make sure that that gets pushed down underneath and that way she can get into a sitting position. Down here where the swiveling thigh joints are, um, you'll notice that it has the part right here that has rubber in the inside. So it kind of does give a good um, comfortable amount of swiveling to the thigh here for that region. So going down to our knee joint, it's a pretty standard knee joint. Um, I, it's very similar to the elbow. Uh, this is going to be your point in which she's going to be able to bend her leg. Um, once again, it's got the two rubber parts here similar to that of the elbow uh, that's up on top. So she can bend it here at this point and make like a 90 degree or you can also do an even more bent position. And then this part right here is, is basically, I think, just for swiveling. That's pretty much all it does. There's nothing rubber in here. It's just all ABS, so I think that's all it does is just for swiveling. And there's the front of the knee. So once again, it can bend like this. You can bend it twice and it can bend even more. So up to you and what you do. Separate the foot, you'll see that the rubber floating piece is there, but all it has down here at the bottom is just the loop there. So I think this is kind of back to the old Hudo traditional method of just looping it through the foot and then bringing it back to the top. So I hope this was helpful for anyone that was looking into the Hujo Amy doll. Um, I think it's a really, really cool concept. I really do enjoy the different aspects that they put into this body um, so that way you can get more movement. I will be putting some photos of her at the end so that way you can see her fully standing, sitting, like crouching over, doing a whole bunch of other positions so you can see it as well. As always, 
If you want to check out this dolly and more dolly goodness, please go ahead and check out the Junkie Spot at www.junkiespot.com. I hope you have a fantastic, awesome day, and I will see you guys in another video very soon. Bye!